Hello, I'm Monica and I'm the artistic director of Faccio Cose. I've been invited by Bo Arts to run a workshop on how to use social media to promote your work. So this workshop is part of a program run by Bo Skills to help artists to develop your creative practice and understanding how to face the current situation. So let's begin. Today, I'm going to help you to create a content strategy plan. Why a content strategy plan is so important? It's a plan to action, which is going to give you all of the time to think about which kind of content do you want to post, how to make it relevant, interesting and unique. Where are you going to post it? Which social media platform? And who is it for? Which audience are you going to engage with this and uh, content and also somehow it's going to give you a sense of uh, empowerment in this period of time in which uh, you might feel lost and you might feel really uncertain about the future so you can keep on being present through the virtuality of the system of social media and you can keep on promoting your work promoting your art and engage with your audience which is so important so in order to make a content strategy plan, the first question we are going to um, answer is, who is your audience? Your audience is indeed your followers. Um, you think that you might know them really well, but I can tell you that you perhaps don't. Um, so you can use some insight to understand exactly how they behave and respond to your uh, um, post. This insight is useful because they give you an understanding of what is the demographic of them, so age groups and also uh, gender, but also they tell you so many important information about what are they likely to engage with, which kind of post they like, which kind of post they go completely ignored. So by just looking at the insight, you you can have some important conclusion about which kind of content they are really, really likely to engage with. And you might also understand why. Because perhaps the content is visually more interesting, or perhaps because it's really useful for that kind of audience, or because it's really inspiring, or because it's really personal and speaks about you. So really create a kind of bullet point and uh, um, note in which you start to analytically really un understand all of these different aspects. Another audience you might want to understand are all of those people who are not yet your followers. So are people that you might want to acquire now and also for the future. Um, how do you know who are they? A very important uh, thing that you can do is just to have a look at um, other artists and um, other creatives who are professional as you and who have a profile on social media, have a look, dig in, stalk them a bit and understand which kind of audiences, which kind of followers do they have. Which kind of content are they uh, creating for these audiences and how likely um, their followers engage with them? And again, write all of this information in your bullet point. So really understand how other people are doing because that is such a um, fundamental uh, um, way of understanding. Cool. Now we answer the first question. Let's move to the second one. The second one is more a personal question, so it's really about you. As an artist or a professional, what are my overall objectives that I want to achieve during this period of time? I'll give you some, some examples. So let's say that some of my objectives as an artist could be the time I want to sell my work. I might want to make, um, I might want to teach um, online painting classes. I might want to um, network with uh, other artists. Pick one of these objectives and question yourself, can I achieve uh, this objective through social media and which social media would I use? Instagram is one of those platforms, if you are a visual artist, in which you must consider to be. Because Instagram is really about visuality, 
and visual inspiration. Audiences go there because they want to feel inspired and motivated. And um, if you're a visual artist, it's the best place to be. Facebook works completely different from Instagram. It's much more a place in which people go because they want to feel connected. They want to feel they are part of a community. They might want to engage with people that are really far away from themselves. It's not really a place to sell work, to sell anything, really. It's much more a, a place to, yeah, just to feel you're part of, uh, of your tribe. Twitter, you need to think that it works again completely different. It's the number one news app in the world, which means people go to Twitter even before going to BBC app news to know what's going on in the world. Um, so people love audiences basically go on Twitter because they want to share opinion, they want to know um, information and news about the world and also they want to complain. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna pick uh, as an objective selling my artwork. I'm gonna do that through Instagram, that is my social media platform, and then I'm gonna make sure that I go back to my audience and I make sure that there is an audience uh, that is gonna be willing to buy the artwork. If there is a match, now is the time to create content for those followers, those audiences who are going to buy your artwork through Instagram. Ah, and that is the best part of it, because as a creative, you might enjoy a lot of creating a content which is original, relevant and unique. Really make sure that you go crazy about possibilities of content. You might want to not just simply put your artwork out and say bye people, bye people, bye people, because that is not really creative, that is not really interesting, that is not really unique. Really think about alternative way of doing things. So, for example, no, if I want to sell my artwork and I am in a lockdown, so I cannot go out, I cannot do anything, and I am basically in my living room or in my bedroom all day, why not to find an original way to sell my artwork through making uh, an exhibition in my living room? Ha 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 ha! To make uh, a live stream on Instagram or making an IGTV. Okay. Content is done, now is the time to pick the right hashtags. So you're gonna make sure that your content can be found on social media. Let me give you some tips about hashtags. So first tip is about numbers. If you are posting on Instagram in the regular feed, make sure that you are not using more than 10 of them. If you're posting on um, stories or IGTV or live stream, make sure that you're not using the three or four maximum hashtags because otherwise it's too much. First of all, they need to be relevant. They need to tell you about what you're doing and you know that as well. But then you need to be really careful with volumes. So pick an hashtag which has a medium size volume of users, which could be in basically 10,000 and people using it above. Then pick another hashtag which has a bit bigger volume, which it could be 100,000 users above. And then combine those two with other two hashtags, which they have a bit narrower volume of users, which it could be 100 users above or 1,000 users above. So in this way, you have a different range of volumes and will make your um, content more likely to be found by other people. Cool, so now the next step you need to do is basically to post this content on social media. And when you do so, make sure that you consider all of the things we've spoken about, so your audience, the right platform, interesting and compelling and relevant way of creating uh, and the content which is also going to achieve your objective and then make sure that you are going to tag us make sure that you mention Bo Arts and also fachogose.uk and feel free to use as a hashtag Bo Skills and also you are always welcome to contact me if you have any questions or contact Bo Arts and I really really hope that this workshop has been useful for you and I look forward to do more with